For a while now on this channel, we've been talking about how this increase in fertilizer prices is going to lead to food shortages and that that could cause real problems for the global economy. And I've been talking about a couple of commodity-based ETFs that I've been using to invest in this trend, in particular corn and wheat. Now, one of the unique things about these commodity-based ETFs, and you may notice if you've ever invested in one of them, is they come with all these disclaimers attached to them that these are risky and that they're not for the novice investor and you really need to do your research before buying them. That's because these funds are actually designed to lose money. You wouldn't think so. Who would create an ETF that's actually designed to lose money? But they are. And that's because of a situation called contango or the time decay of the assets that make up that ETF. These funds invest in futures and futures are typically losing value as days tick off the calendar. However, right now we're in a situation called backwardation, not contango. And that means that that typical value losing attribute of these commodity ETFs has been turned on its head and they're actually making money hand over fist and they could actually outperform their underlying commodities. And before we get into the mechanics of how that works, I want to talk about the sponsor of today's video, Aura.com. In 2020, 49 million Americans were the victim of identity theft and it ended up costing them a combined $56 billion. And this isn't happening to just people who fall for phishing scams or use bad passwords. 37 billion passwords got hacked in 2020 alone from major social media sites, national grocery store chains, cryptocurrency exchanges, pharmacies, phone and internet providers. That means that unless you want to give up the internet, preventing your personal information from leaking could be out of your control. And that's why I'm excited to partner with Aura who's sponsoring this video. Aura's app uses AI and machine learning to protect your identity online. You tell Aura what email addresses, account numbers, and phone numbers you want monitored, and their algorithms scour the dark web, data brokers, and public records, and will alert you to any criminal activity fast. Aura's app also features a VPN that encrypts your browser history and allows you to stay anonymous online. And their antivirus software will block malware and viruses before they infect your devices. Someone becomes a victim of identity fraud every 14 seconds. Don't be the next one. Let Aura do the hard work of protecting your identity. I signed up for Aura and had them scour the dark web for my personal information and have the peace of mind of knowing that that came up zero times in the search. Try Aura free for two weeks and see if your personal identifiable information has leaked to the dark web. You can start your free trial at Aura.com slash nobody. Be sure to leave a comment down below and let us know how many times your information was found online. Now, before we get too far into this, I have to tell you, I'm not a financial advisor. This isn't financial advice. All that CYMA stuff, I want you to do your own research and your own DD and arrive at a decision that's right for you based on your unique situation. Now, there are a couple of different types of commodity ETFs that are out there. Some of them actually buy the underlying commodity. Take PSLV, for example. They actually buy physical silver and store it in a vault. There are other commodity ETFs that invest in futures. Now, that's an important distinction because those commodity ETFs that invest in futures suffer from the decaying effects of contango. And that contango decay makes those ETFs lousy long-term holds. If you've ever zoomed out on a chart of any of these commodity-based ETFs, you've probably seen something that looks like this. What you're looking at here in blue is the price of a fictional ETF, and in black would be the spot price of the underlying commodity. Now you can see over time, even if the spot price of the underlying commodity does not move at all, over time that ETF is going to lose value from Contango. Now the reason for that is when you buy futures, there is a time value attached to those futures. Typically, the further out you buy, the more expensive those futures get. And as the days go by, those futures actually lose a little bit of their value until they get to maturity. Well, what these commodity ETFs do is they sell futures when they near maturity and they roll that over into further out futures. So say it's May right now and I'm investing in corn futures. As those May futures near expiration, I sell them and then I buy June futures. Well, when June gets here, I roll them over and I sell them again and I buy July. Every time that time decay is eating away at the underlying value of these ETFs. And that's why we get this horrible looking blue line where you're losing value over time even if the underlying commodity isn't moving. It's why futures based ETFs are lousy long term holds. You really only want to buy them for trades. You don't want to park them in your portfolio and walk away. You come back a few years later and it's gone. That's how things typically work in these commodity based ETFs. However, right now, we are not in Contango. What's happening in commodity markets right now, with the prospect of shortages everywhere, is these commodities are trading in backwardation. Now, what backwardation means is that the near term contracts are more expensive than the long term stuff. So, again, my hypothetical corn ETF if I sell these May futures and I buy the June futures, 
Now, because of backwardation, the June futures are cheaper, so I can buy more of them. Then as time goes on, and now the June maturity gets here, they've actually increased in value instead of going down. Now I sell the June futures, and again, I buy cheaper July futures. And those July futures start to increase in value as the days tick off the calendar. That's called backwardation. And because of the structure of these commodity ETFs, if these commodities stay in backwardation for longer periods of time, you end up with a chart like this. Now you can see the opposite of Contango. Even if the underlying commodity spot price doesn't move at all and just trades sideways, as this backwardation continues and as the days tick off the calendar, those underlying commodity futures are increasing in value as they near expiration. So as that rollover happens over and over again, you're actually increasing in value. You have reversed this long-term decline. So if these commodities stay in backwardation for long periods of time, this can have a compounding effect and it can really increase the net asset value of these commodity ETFs and therefore the price of these ETFs. Now typically this doesn't happen in these commodity ETFs because backwardation happens when there are shortages and it tends to incentivize bringing more production online. For example, if I can sell my stuff at a higher price in the short term, I might put an extra shift on at the factory or at the mine, produce more material, in order to take advantage of those higher short-term prices. That has the effect of adding supply to the market, which usually brings the prices down and the backwardation quickly corrects itself and commodities return to being in contango. However, what we have right now is deep backwardation in agricultural commodities. See, that's different. With agricultural commodities, it's not so simple as just putting on another shift at the factory. These things have to be grown. They need rain, they need time, they need seasons. So the fact that these near-term futures right now are in backwardation and they're more expensive than the further out ones, that doesn't mean more supply is going to come online. So these commodities could stay in backwardation for a long time. And just to give you a bit of an idea of what I'm talking about, what I'm looking at here is the corn ETF that I've been investing in and what their holdings are. From their website, they're about 35% allocated to September corn futures, about 30% allocated to December corn futures, and about 35% allocated to December of 2023 corn futures. Now, if you want to see what that looks like, let's take a look right now. The July futures, which is the active month that's trading, they're at $801 for a contract. Well, the September futures are at $773 per contract. That means that if we stay in backwardation between now and September and the price does not move at all, the price of that September contract is going to increase to $801. That will increase the net asset value of that ETF. And if you look at the December contracts, they're even cheaper at $761, which means as we approach December, assuming we stay in backwardation and there's no change in the underlying spot price, those December contracts are going to go from $761 up to $801. Looking even further out at the December of 2023 contracts, they're trading at $654, which means they'll increase in value as they near expiration. Keep in mind that these rollovers happen every few months. They sell the near-dated contracts and they buy the longer-dated stuff. So they'll be selling at a higher value, buying more contracts at a lower value, and those more contracts will increase in value as maturity approaches, and the net asset value in these things can really explode higher. So you can see that these corn futures are in deep backwardation right now, and as the ETFs continuously roll over their holdings, they're actually adding value to their fund. So the longer we stay in backwardation, even if the underlying commodity doesn't go up in value, this fund is going to go up. And again, you have to factor in that this fertilizer story is just beginning. The price of corn is, in my opinion, going much, much higher in the near future as crop yields are bound to decline this year. Farmers are planting less corn and using less fertilizer. That means the shortages are going to get worse, and if the shortages get worse, backwardation gets even worse, and these commodity ETFs could really rip higher. And you don't just have to take my word for it. You can take it directly from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Check out this video that I did just a few days ago about how they're already starting to lower their crop estimates for this year, but they still need to lower them further. Till next time, live small and dream big.